Hi guys, I'm back. So it seems hard to keep focus on the project. And uh, last week there was no video. And before that there was a video about something that doesn't exactly relate to building the motor. But now we are back and trying to continue with the motor build. So let's go and have a look. Right now I have a breadboard with a lot of transistors. And that seems to be the way uh, to drive more coils separately instead uh, of using this three transistor array or setup that we used before. And also because I use this new setup we can drive the output back into the source capacitor instead of driving it into the LED. So now let's have a look at how that runs. Right, we can see some current. Sometimes the resistor here isn't fully in, so I have to press it a bit. There we go, that's better. You can see it uh, accelerates a little bit faster. And right about now, there's also a point where we should be a little bit careful because uh, the magnets you saw, they are uh, stuck together with tape there because just having the magnets there isn't enough anymore. So for now, the speed levels out at about uh, 370. Right. But I've seen it go up to 470 and then the magnet f flown out and it was sort of scary. So uh, I don't think we should go all the way up there. So right now it's about 401 RPM or 402 at uh, uh, well 420-ish uh, milliampere. Let's take on this little sidetrack. So somebody said in the comments like uh, did you isolate the iron laminates like the iron welding rods and I said no so uh, as you can see here yeah there is a connection between several different rods so even though there's glue in between the, they still connect so eddy currents can build up and this would be something that can be improved. So let's go for another little sidetrack. And so somebody in the comments asked me, uh, can we run a motor from the spike output of this, uh, these coils? And so I don't really have a motor which is easily connected, so I guess we could use this ferris wheel. Um, this ferris wheel hasn't been running forever. And as you can see, the LEDs don't turn on, probably because the slip rings something is with it or whatever this will be an interesting motor to run from the spike because there is a microcontroller there in front so so let's go ahead and try yeah so i figured it'd be nice to have the leds running again as you can see they're also controlled by a microcontroller so yeah i think it's everything to do with the amount of voltage that is available mm, as you can see the red lights are only on right now it's because of the slip rings and there you have it all together. So now let's try to run it from a spike from this motor. So I guess this will be your answer. The LEDs come on. The motor is spinning quite fast. I also hooked up this LED just to be sure that the capacitor doesn't blow up. It takes 420 milliampere. Um, but I cannot seem to get the wheel to keep running. And you can see sometimes the LED comes on so it doesn't always take the power into the mini ferris wheel. I guess you could say it's also uh, not very balanced. So I don't know if you remember this one. This is a spin top right and it was used on the Pulse Motor build off in 2013 or so. So right now when I spin it up nothing happens because the motor isn't running, right? So you can spin all you want, nothing will happen. So if I spin up this motor here, you'll see the LED comes on, right? 
So you say, okay, that's not a lot, but as you can see, it turns on the motor. Not just that. It'll, it'll make me have two scary motors right here. Look, look at how fast this is going already. Gyroscopic and such. Right, this one stopped, so. It only requires a little bit to go super fast. So I'll be very careful here. Stop! <laughs> so yeah, interesting question. Does it run a motor? Yes, it can. Easily, if you have the correct motor. So previously we designed this circuit to run the motor and uh, it was from the book uh, Free Energy Generation by John Bedini and Tom Bearden. And uh, it is a little bit modified to use the transistors that I have around here. And I figured out that this wouldn't run it. So basically there's too much resistance in the control circuit here. And so I tweaked it and changed it. And then this came out, uh, which is the circuit on top. So as you can see, there is a resistor here from the trigger coil and that is a pop meter and it is tuned in a bit. I just don't know exactly how much, but let's say that is 110 ohms. Then there is the first transistor, which uh, turns on by the trigger coil and it will in turn turn on these other transistors right here from the positive through the base of the BD140 with a current limiting resistor of 330 ohms well this is switched on and then it'll go from the base of the BD139 to the ground that will provide the power through these bases and that turns on the you know power coil here and the whenever the trigger coil is, uh, turns off the trigger BD139 then this will also be shut off and the coil will then collapse the spike uh, back into the source so like source negative and positive here and what you've also seen on the video is sometimes the LED is on, that would mean the LED is on here. Um, what I have tried so far, it works the best with one transistor on the trigger coil side and the second circuit, like you can see it has not changed here, that would also be the same circuit with the minor change that there is no transistor there. It's the same transistor that is drawn here that triggers the other circuit because that delivers the most output or current into the coil. Then you would say the same thing would apply to the power stage um, with the double transistors here. So these are in parallel and these ones here as well. Um, well, it appears that having a parallel transistor configuration on the output side does seem to help the power going into the coils. So when you compare it to the circuit from the book, um, the sort of pull up resistor here at the BD140 isn't required, so it will actually shut off without it. So I left it out because that would be a small waste current. The current limiting resistor here, which would practically only be used for the BD140 to turn on because the BD139 doesn't require it. Uh, it is also not necessary because all of the current that the BD140 needs can go through the transistor here and also through the base of the BD1 Three nine here, so it is also left out, and then the current limiting resistor here, the three 
3.3k is too much resistance so I changed it to a 330 ohm resistor and that would actually run the circuit. All in all when all the changes are made this is the new circuit. As you can see the circuit on the top and the bottom are identical for the power stage, the control circuit and uh, for the trigger part there is only one transistor which shares the collector and emitter and turns on the second circuit as well. So if you have any questions about the circuit for example, uh, don't hesitate to leave a question in the comment section below and uh, if you like the video subscribe. Um, so that's it for now and thanks for watching, see you next time!